Rather than just doing a straightforward time lapse, I thought it would be quite interesting if I talk you through the thoughts that I was having while I was doing this drawing, things I was trying to achieve and how I worked towards the finish. Of course, we always start with a blank piece of paper. And if you look closely down the bottom right, you can see there's a small mark there. The reason that's there is I wanted to test how the charcoal would be on the paper. It varies by the day, by the humidity, and uh, also by the stick of charcoal that you are using. Some are harder, some are softer, some have taken on a little bit of moisture and some haven't. That's what that mark is all about. And we start with our blank piece of paper. We have to make our first marks. There's so many different ways of starting. And for this particular portrait of Jimi Hendrix, I decided that I wanted to have some form of a structure to work with. This is something that I learned from Zin Lim and also from Jacob Hankinson to create some overall form that serves as a basis for the head. I found since adopting this technique that my portraits seem to have more solidity to them and much greater sense of volume. And it is, in essence, you put down a circle and you put down a mask in front of it. And here you can see that I've done the very first circle. It's just a circle in the middle of the page. And you'll see later how I realized that because of the size of Jimmy's hair, that I decided to move that across to, to the right. So here I've just drawn a circle and put some form of a, of a mask down there. I've started to move it over to the right a little bit and alter the, the size of the, the, the mask falling off the, the front of the sphere. There's a center line and I'm just trying to put in some marks that I'm seeing. So from the reference, I can see there's a strong diagonal that mirrors the left side of his face, which is on our right. Now I'm looking at it and evaluating the size, strengthening the diagonals and trying to get some form of an overall shape going on for the for the head. This is like an abstract shape, which you can see doesn't really look like a head at this stage. So I've kind of gone away from the underlying structure of a sphere with a mask. And now I've kind of switched into abstract shape mode just while I get some sense of size and placement on the page. And while I'm here, let's put some abstract marks in place as well, just for a little bit of interest. Now back to thinking about the structure of the head. Lines in for the eyebrows, for the eye line, for the bottom of the nose, for the mouth, for the chin. And here we have a start that effectively could be anybody at all. It's a basic generic human head. Already I can see that the chin is too shallow and you'll see later on in this video how I push that further down. Just a little bit of refinement now to work out where everything is. The reference I'm working from at this stage will be blurred so that I'm not getting sucked into any particular detail. And at this early stage, I do want to put in some expressive marks to build some kind of movement on the page. You can see how it's snaking across the page, that line that goes from the top center down the left-hand side and then swoops in to the right-hand side and then swoops down to the bottom of the page. So it's kind of like an S sort of composition or a, uh, a reverse question mark. Now I'm looking at the overall shape and thinking that I can put in some stronger details that will serve as anchor points as I work through the portrait. So here we've got uh, the cheek, there we've got the, uh, the far side of the nose, the shadow up into the eyebrow. And this is just a case of mapping things in, putting some darks in there. The eye is somewhere around there. The nose is somewhere around there. The bottom of the nose, the lips are somewhere around there. And now I can see already that the chin is too shallow. So make that a little bit deeper. Now switching mode a little bit into the shadow shapes that I'm seeing in the reference and trying to get those overall shapes in place, those dark masses. And at this stage now, I want to switch into getting at least an idea of the extent of his hair. And I want to do that with some expressive marks. You can see how I've changed the angle of the charcoal in my, in my hand. So I can strike lines across, I can put in dark areas and leave them as expressive marks for now where you can see 
the action that I've taken onto the paper. Okay, with that in place, we can now go back to the focal point areas, just mainly around the eye, putting the nostril in place, looking at shapes all around. That's the eye just going in, and they're starting to blend to give some idea of volume going back in space, working across the portrait, putting some areas of detail in just to serve as, a, as an anchor point. And I can use that to reference the other areas that I need to attend to, work out whether they need to move up or down or larger or smaller and so forth. Using a paper towel now just to neaten up the shape of the head, if you like the abstract graphic flat shape of the head. Still not looking like Jimi Hendrix, but that's okay. It's unlikely to at this stage, especially with the chin as shallow as I have it at this point in the portrait. I'm still looking at shadow shapes here. There's a chamois leather just going in there to correct the wing of the nostril. Now I'm looking at the overall shape of the nose compared to that eye that I've established in a little bit more detail. I'm therefore using the eye as the anchor point and working through the other features compared to that. Now going to the far eye, a little bit of blending just to try and model the form across the nose, down into the mouth. Now this is all about refinement. I know that the shapes are there somewhere, but exactly where are they? You can see how I move the line of the mouth down, re-establish the shadow. That told me that the bottom lip was too high. So move that down and because that was too high, so the bottom of the chin was also way too high. And so I'm establishing that and blending it in to give it some kind of form to make it feel that it's moving around in space. Starting to look a little bit more like Jimi Hendrix now. Let's go back to the eyes and establish where the white of the eye is and a little fold of skin underneath the eye as well. So that's the approximation of the portrait. It's not exact. It's not a fantastic likeness. You could kind of tell that it's sort of Jimi Hendrix, but it's not a fantastic likeness, but it's certainly a good start. A lot of people would call this a no tan and it's not exactly no tan because I've been doing some form modeling as I've been going, but it is quite a stark black versus white sort of representation. And I now need to establish some subtlety in the skin tone and establish some skin tone across the portrait. And for that, I'll switch to a thinner piece of charcoal, which just means that I can shade areas lightly and then go in with my finger to blend it into what's already there building up the skin tones across the portrait and blending with my finger. So establishing the fold of the upper eyelid. I do like the idea of that fold line not being contiguous, not being joined up so that it's as if the light catching the eyelid at that point is bleaching out the detail of the shadow of that particular fold. So establish that, blend it in with my finger and now that eye socket is starting to look like it is going back in space, looking like it's catching shadow and it's starting to get some sort of volume to it. And at the same time, it's starting to look a little bit more like Jimi Hendrix. While I'm doing all of this work, all of the time I'm checking my drawing, I'm checking to see if things need to be larger, smaller, whether I need to move up, whether I need to move down, left or right, compared to the reference. The more that I work on the portrait, the deeper I tend to observe these subtleties in the reference. It's as if you're climbing into the portrait as you're drawing it. That eye is reasonably established to the point where I can go across the forehead and smooth that out. I've now got a tonal base to work from. The temple just needed a little bit of darkening there. Still using this thin stick of charcoal, as you can see, going through, looking at different areas, working out how it can all blend together. Uh, there was a point where I got it way too dark. So I used a chamois leather to pick that back out again, back in with the finger, smooth it all out. That area was too dark, needed to push back for the neck, up into the ear. And this is the bit where you just have to keep going round and round, working at different areas, putting a slight amount of moustache in there, which gives me the basis of where the upper lip is. It gives me the shape of the upper lip, which I've then established. 
Now I'm going to the lower lip and I know that he's got a slight amount of beard hair that goes past his bottom lip. Still struggling with the chin. I've moved it down even more. And actually I'm struggling now with the fact that I established that chin too early on in the wrong place. And as you know, once you put charcoal on paper and blend it in with your finger, it's quite difficult to lift out. But I think I get around that by using a chamois leather to pick that out a little bit and working on the, the tonal areas everywhere else. Now with the chin in place, I can put the line in for the shirt collar and that gives a nice diagonal movement to the abstract area, which is the outside of the portrait. And that puts me into a different frame of mind to let's establish what's happening on the outside and let's put some gestural marks in to link the portrait and the dark areas with the perimeter of the paper. You can see I'm back to a, a larger stick of charcoal now. The cheek was a little bit high and so I've pushed it down, lifting it out with a kneaded eraser and putting some darker darks where the hair meets the neck. And now that I've established that darkest dark behind the neck, I strengthen the dark underneath his jawline and into the chin. So I'm setting the tonal pattern for the bottom of the face. And with those changes, it is now starting to look a lot more like Jimi Hendrix. Back to the thinner charcoal to put in some value at the bottom of the face. It always helps to bear in mind that the light is coming from above the head. And so as the face goes down, it gets progressively darker. We don't usually notice it when we're talking to people, but that is what's going on on the face. It's called light drop off. And if you're aware of it, you can draw for that and it will make your portraits look more three dimensional and more accurate in terms of volume. Putting a bit of detail in on the bottom lip to make that turn using the blending stump and the thin charcoal just to get those shapes right and make it look as if that bottom lip is curving in space. Slightly too dark on the top part of the chin using a kneaded eraser to pull a little bit of charcoal out. Now reshaping the chin itself to get the shadow shape correct. And I felt that the line of the chin was a little bit lost. I thought it was best to pull that out and establish a clear line that would represent the side of his mouth and the shape of his chin. I decided to continue with that, just clarify the bottom of the chin. Okay, a few more gestural marks. Now I need to darken the hair, give the hair some volume, Wipe the charcoal from dark into the light, again to give it movement. Put some graphic lines in there, put some tone in there. Using the side of a, a very large chunk of charcoal now, just to block in the hair. And I like that, so I'll do a little bit more of that. Back to the thinner charcoal now to put some lines in place, give it movement, to give it some energy. Now thinking more tonally because that part of the hair is curving in, so it will be in shadow and therefore it will be darker. Okay, back to the detail and starting to go around again. Let's look at the eyes, looking at the far eye, looking at the shape of the nose, trying to model everything and refine it. Switch to a pencil now because I want to work on the detail of the eye. The paper I'm using is a very smooth paper and it does help to use a charcoal pencil when you want to get a very dark line and a very precise line, which I want to get around the focal point, which is the eye. So establish the outside of the iris, picking out the highlight of the eye with a kneaded eraser. And now back in with the charcoal pencil to put in the pupil around that highlight. Kneaded eraser to pick out the upper edge of the bottom eyelid. And some charcoal just to put in some shading around where the eyelashes go. And looking at that upper eyelid fold, getting that to go back in space. I'm using a blending stump there just because it's more accurate than the side of my finger. Here you can see I've got the eyebrows quite solid and I want to use a kneaded eraser just to pick out some lines which then read as skin showing through the broken hair. So it breaks up the solidity and it lightens the effect of the eyebrow. More tonal modeling around the temple into the eye. Because I've established a little bit more tone in the eye socket, it showed that the temple area was a little bit light and it tends to be darker anyway, which reads as the temple going in and then the cheekbone coming back out again. More refinement around the eye. So I'm really trying to work this eye up to more of a finish. The next area that jumped out to me was the mouth, which didn't look quite dark enough. So put a little bit more tone in there, reestablish his moustache and really work around the bottom area of his face, trying to balance that up with his right eye socket. Charcoal pencil just to re-establish the bottom of the nose. I'm really trying to get that uh, highlight to ping in his eye and do the far eye as well. 
can't get that quite bright enough. I've tried a kneaded eraser, now I'm trying a mono eraser, which is a little bit better. Draw around it with a charcoal pencil to make it darker. If you can't get your highlights light, it's always a good idea to make the surrounding area darker and the highlights will appear lighter. So establish the fold of the upper lid, try and reshape the upper lid. It's too stark and therefore use the blending stump and charcoal just to try and model all that in place and try and lose that far edge so it's a really soft edge which will make it go back in space. So you can see this stage is all about refinement. Everything is pretty much in place. I've got a reasonable likeness. It looks like Jimi Hendrix. And now it's a case of making everything balanced in the drawing to make sure tonally it works, to give the impression of three dimensions and volume to the head. And that is all about tonal accuracy. Of course, in charcoal drawing, tone is all you have, or well, tone and texture, but tone is pretty much all you have, and therefore tonal accuracy is paramount. I don't like that jawline, so let's take a chamois leather and break it. Now, all of a sudden, that's a lot more interesting than having a solid line going down the jaw. A little bit of refinement on the eye just to make that curve. The whites of the eye are a little bit dark, and so I'm pulling out some charcoal with a kneaded eraser. Go back in with a darker pencil to make the iris and pupil look darker. I think that's the eye pretty much done. I'll probably go back and tinker with it a little bit later. The nose was just a little bit dark, so going with a chamois leather to lift some charcoal out and refine that shape. Now look at re-establishing the keystone shape between the two eyebrows. Soften that across so that the nose is turning in space. I established a line for the far end of the nose. I don't really like doing that but I needed to in order to describe where that nose was and just using a blending stump to try and soften that line so it's just not as harsh. And it's more of a case where that you see the line because of the darker tone that's behind it as opposed to seeing that line itself. Here I'm using a small stick of compressed charcoal to darken the pupil of the eye and also to establish the nostril. And having established the nostril, I feel that it's too dark and I want to lose it in the shadow underneath the nose anyway, blending it in with some charcoal. Back to the nose, soften the nose again, lift out the other side so it's catching the light, balance up his left eye which isn't going back in space just yet. You can see a lot of it is putting charcoal down, blending it, establishing an edge, then losing that edge to create interest and also to create that sense of three dimensions. Darkening under the nose again, re-establishing the shadow, cleaning up underneath the chin and that profile shape. And once I've cleaned it, establish it again, clean it again, establish it again, and so forth. Still not happy with the nose, so take a chamois to it and try and model that a little bit better. But these are lots of very tiny changes now. Looking at the overall portrait, seeing what jumps out first, so touching a little bit on the lip, touching a little bit on the nose and so forth, and trying to bring it all together. So at this point, I realized that the bottom of the face was too light. I wanted the focal point to be his right eye, and therefore I felt that it was important to darken the bottom of his face to allow that greater tonal contrast to take place around the focal point. Thin stick of charcoal to darken around the bottom of his face, reducing that tonal contrast of the cast shadow on his chin, and then blending it in with my finger. As you can see, blending always lightens it. Some charcoal comes off onto your finger, and if it doesn't, you can always use a chamois leather to lift it a little bit lighter still. Time for a few more expressive marks to build interest. And I noticed that the darkest dark behind his neck has lightened up a little bit, so re established that more expressive marks. And to give the impression of some curls in his hair, I decided to use this mono eraser to sort of scratch into the charcoal and put some sort of small shapes in there, which looks like the light is catching certain strands of his hair. Soften the hairline, which gives a nice effect and always helps with the perception of depth. Going off my light source, I realized that there should be a highlight on the corner of his forehead. So I established that. In all the blending that I've done, I've lost the lower part of his moustache. So put that back in place and soften that back down. I want to darken it underneath his lip again, but then I realise it looks a little bit too dark. So back in with the finger to lighten that and also darken the area beneath that to try and make that look right. But this still looks too dark. So in with the chamois leather to pick it out a little bit more and lighten everywhere. 
earlier on I established a shape for his shirt collar and it looks very white which I didn't like so I've gone in there and darkened that back up again and that all of a sudden has made the face pop forward. Establish the colour line again with a thin piece of charcoal and some expressive marks. I'm still not happy with the brightness of those highlights so try and go back in again with a kneaded eraser and pick them out a little bit. Looking at the highlight in his right eye it looks a little bit low and so let's try and move it up by picking it with a kneaded eraser and darken the previously highlighted area using a charcoal pencil. A little bit of blending on the nose, lightening of the wing of the nose, a few highlights on his lip to show where it's catching the light, refinement of his bottom lip. Now I can see that the line that I've put in for his back is not quite wide enough so let's establish something a little bit wider there give it some more depth and time for some more gestural lines for his hair, a few wipes of the chamois leather and a few more lines from the mono eraser to show some little strands of hair. I'd really like to lighten the highlight in his right eye. I'd love that to be white, but unfortunately I've already darkened the paper. And so a little trick you can use is some white Conte pencil just to establish that spot of catch light in both eyes. If you use too much of the white Conte, it's a different temperature of white to the paper and it looks odd, but for a small spot like the catch light in the eye, you can usually get away with it. And with just a couple of marks, that's the finished portrait. I hope you enjoyed me talking you through the creation of this portrait and that you found it more useful than a straightforward time-lapse video.